So last time we, um, well, bad things happened. The city facade is now is in mourning, and we are technically supposed to go and speak to Popola about what to do next. Um, no. No, I don't think so. Now that we've finished off the facade main quest, all of their side quests are open. So, since we're here, might as well help them out a little bit, I guess. My first order of business is this guy. He says there is something causing people to disappear out in the middle of the sandstorm. Pretty good guess that it is uh, likely a giant shade. Those having been the reason people have been disappearing in all the other weathers. This guy only appears if the sandstorm is strong enough, which um, it almost always is. I think I've only had one occasion where he just didn't show up for some reason, but he's out there. You can kind of see. Is this it? The shade that appears during sandstorms? Look out! You can't see a thing in here! <coughs> There's sand in my mouth! This is quite an ordeal. <coughs> we gotta get close enough to kill him. Let's get this over. Yeah, he's... he's a pushover. That was it. Same as all the other ones, but, uh... Not particularly strong. In this particular moment, he's accompanied by this weird flying shade. Those guys can be a bit of a pain in the ass, given that they're usually airborne, and they're very agile. They can pretty easily sidestep or side fly, whatever, whenever you fire magic at them. So knocking that guy down and hitting him is, is actually kind of lucky. They're also armored. Like, universally armored. I'm not sure you can actually knock it off. So, they can be a bit tough. That one in particular was not. Fortune smiled upon me for a moment. Anyway, Big Shade's dead. Back to facade. The people of Facade still pay extremely well for your doing menial errands for them. And while I was here, I remembered that um, we had been handed the Ancient Overlord last time. It's not very good. I believe it is also a relic from Drakengard. The story itself looks familiar. But the weapon is not very uh, interesting. Eel. Anyway, menial tasks or urgent ones. Right, Baron Temple. It's been a long while since we've been here. And this is, um, this and another quest are basically the only reasons to come back here. What a headache. 
What is? We've not the time to worry about random bandits. The temple is really important to the masked people, you know. Then perhaps they should station some guards at the entrance. There's probably a rule about that. Hell, they can't even go inside the place. And thus, my headache. Stop bitching and get moving. Thank you. Yeah, Baron Temple. Fortunately, we opened those sand spout wells, so we can just teleport willy nilly. like Nier needs to have a threshold to be able to kill the shade. It's as dangerous as they say, it's as big as they say. If it's a shade, it's too dangerous to live. So because our dear banded friends came in here and ruined everything, we have to contend with all of the challenges being back in place. This is basically trivial. Um, Sharyar is gone, so all of the actual puzzly bits of the task are done for. It's all combat from here on. The effect on the first room here is back to Stationary Owl, which, um, well, you know, you just run around. You, the only thing is that you can't cast magic because that qualifies as standing still to do it. Not a big deal. You might notice that the party doesn't actually join us inside these rooms. I'm not sure if this is part of the rules, since this was supposed to be a task meant for the royal family alone, or if they're just smart enough to not go through with this crap, in which case I don't blame them. Next up on the list is Jumping Rabbit, which, um... doesn't prove to be much of a challenge either. As I was saying before, there's very little reason to come back to the Baron Temple if you're not doing these side quests. The only thing you'd really be looking for is fluoride drops. Which I mentioned given that I just got a fluoride drop. This or the junk heap, and you wind up in the junk heap so long you might as well come here for a change of scenery. In addition to all the blocks being gone, all the normal enemies that were in here are gone as well. This includes the spiders that only spawned after we finished the entire area, and the bats, both of which are completely extinct. Much like sheep. This room uh, is a bitch and a half, of course. The running Wolf, you know, whenever it decides to show the title. Racing Wolf, whatever. I have been so traumatized by all the times I messed up so badly just trying to not push the analog stick too hard. I, um, I'm kind of paranoid about it. Yeah, I basically began moving by spear charging at some point. And just go. No. Okay. There. Oh, that was a tough one. Tough being relative here.
next room we're back to is Protective Turtle, I believe. Yes. Again, far, far harder than Racing Wolf, given my propensity to defend. Oh, wait. I believe this just leaves one more, uh, slightly- no. Never mind, I have no idea what I'm doing. We return now to... I think this is Magic Spewing Bat? Yes. So... You know, this is the room where I just have to hit things in the face repeatedly. That was easy. Anyway, this has been an interesting exercise just because it's been so long since you didn't do anything particularly puzzly. So it's kind of nice to have to kind of sort of work around restrictions, and it's also nice to be able to uh, destroy things and just circumvent them entirely. Like, you know, Magic Spewing Bat, that should have been a little bit more tricky, because you have to get right up to the shade and his um, swords will knock uh, pretty appreciable amounts of, off your health. Or you could just stab him repeatedly, because you far overpowered by this point, I imagine. Even playing normally, you you really have uh, no excuse for finding that guy tough. And of course, Blade Wielding Tiger, being the opposite of magic spewing bats. Tigers and bats being opposed animals, of course. Yeah, your magic attack is more than enough to make up for that. Now we're really at the last two rooms. One of them we visited before, the other one is the one they opened by breaking the seal. I also demonstrate what it is to swim in sand. Don't do it. Basic mouse, of course, that means you cannot dodge roll. I think I long ago explained why this is annoying for more reasons than just not being able to evade. Dodge roll is one of your recovery options in addition to the defend button. So if you, like me, absolutely refuse to use the defend button, uh, getting knocked down is your worst enemy, your greatest weakness, and can result in you dying really quickly if all the shades are allowed to come gang up on you. But they're all dead now, so it doesn't matter. Except that guy. There we go. And now the final trial is in this room, which we weren't allowed to open before. It was always locked away by a magic seal. This quest is the first time that you're allowed to open it and it will remain open hereafter like all the other rooms. It is time for getting monkey. Which is a kind of weird way to put it, but it basically means, you know, you're timed. I believe the maximum amount you can spend in here is three minutes. Don't quote me on that. I've 
never really, you know, bothered to figure it out. Personally, because it's the only time it ever activates. And, you know, you finish a side quest, that's it. It's enough time that I did feel that I could run backwards and scrounge around for any missing items without risking this. And of course, in the end, is another big shade. I, th I think that he is actually st statistically more powerful than the one in the desert. He certainly hits harder. And he seems to have a little more HP. Oh, there's some dead people. But he's really a pushover. Now you could run all the way back, but if you examine the bodies... Yeah, I didn't do very good against him. This guy gives you a free teleport. Not that it's a big deal to go back to the beginning of the, the temple, but... Meh, yeah, it's, it's a nice thought. Saved me all 45 seconds. <laughs> Meanwhile, this poor bandit has been standing out here trying to think of what to do next for the last ten minutes. Apparently running just never occurred to him. Anyway, we need to kill him now. He's, um... He's not really that much of a threat, to say the least. Oh, but wait a second, life bar! Oh, never mind, he's dead. Oh, that was fun. Once you get that guy, you're just automatically taken back to facade. Hey. Nice and easy. It's good to know that the phrase in the clink has survived all these years. Now, um, the quest that we just finished there is actually imperative to be able to finish the rest of the facade side quests. I mean, you know, obviously it counts as a facade side quest, but there's another one that's completely reliant on it having been accomplished. And this is some really interesting information, but unfortunately the next thing I do has absolutely nothing to do with it. Oh well. Streamlining. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so bearing that in mind, uh, this guy right here Whoa. wants us to not do something involving the Baron Temple or um, butchery, murder, or bandits. He just wants us to do some shopping. He's a little melodramatic, isn't he? So, I... was missing everything. Fortunately, this is really just a matter of running around doing some extra shopping. Logs, of course, can be bought back back in the village. Uh, clay can actually be bought in facade, but I forgot about that until I came back. And the iron ore can be bought from Gideon. It's a real simple fetch quest. Even if you don't have anything, it's, uh... Well, not a, not a terrible lot out of your pocket, and not a whole lot of time. I am glad that I completely forgot what this guy needed, though. Uh, first of all, this actually acts as a dialogue trigger here. Everybody in Facade seemed kind of depressed. 
And they were attacked by wolves, and their queen lies dead. Everyone in the city really loved Fira, didn't they? Yeah. We should help them if we can. They've earned that much. You're right, Kaine. Everyone seemed depressed after the wolves killed the queen. Good job. Oh. <laughs> but more important than that, as I was coming back from shopping, I, uh, I found somebody. Somebody hanging out right by the dock. Hello. What are you doing here? Hey. Yeah, it's the girl who was almost killed by her lover. There can be no reason for her to be wandering alone in the desert. I'm sure there's a reason. Grown-ups always have reasons for stuff like that. Hmm. A bit of a simplistic analysis, but perhaps true nonetheless. I shall bear that in mind the next time something seemingly meaningless occurs. I don't know why that's a big deal. She was dressed up like a warrior. She was probably out there to, you know, kill wolves. I mean, I, I know that we committed doggy genocide earlier, but there's still some out there. You go into the sandstone, you go back far enough, they're still hanging around. They're all dead. what I was doing. I was deliberating whether to go out to another shop or find the uh, facade materials shop. And since I'd, I'd um, you know, canvassed all the other areas, I figured, well, if, if I'm gonna yield by clay, it's probably gonna be in facade. Yeah. Clay and giant wolves! Wow, those skins are huge! Yeah, clay, uh, there it was. There was the play. Hey. These wolves are bears! God. Right, so, um... Having done that, I had a long, extended mental lapse. I... I'm not sure what I was trying to accomplish at any point in time. To be fair, I probably should have expected something astoundingly stupid like this to happen when I do all of my recording in the middle of the night. Extremely well. I. Other than that one um, special occasion where you can choose to get 50,000, I'm pretty sure that is the single highest side crest reward that you're going to see. Now, again, since we did the bandits thing, the king is hanging out up here. Yep. Close with the rules and I'll be the only one going in there. That's that's no good. Anyway, this is the point where we just turn right back around and head out to the Baron Temple again.
on the way out, we are met in short order with a rather familiar face. Hey. Why would you detain her? She's close to facade because she lives in facade. Why is this so... Why is everybody so hung up about this? <sighs> anyway. In order to kill some time, here's some um, interesting trivia. Well, trivia anyway. Facade originally started its life as a penal colony. Out in the middle of nowhere in Japan. When uh, the great disaster took hold, they were basically cut off from the main civilization had to fend for themselves. This is why all of the residents of Facade, everyone that we're aware of anyway, is named for a number, including uh, King Sex, uh, Fira, and the advisor whose name I don't actually recall, but I believe it was uh, some foreign language for the number 8. Um, this is also why they are governed not, not explicitly by laws, but by rules. Like, um, you know, the penal colony rules governing when you can do things, how you do things, uh, curfews, things of that nature. And it's also the reason that their language wound up uh, taking such a sharp turn from the way that the rest of the area speaks. They were set apart from everybody else, and since they were isolated like that, they just, you know, the, um, the language drift over the years just uh, took a different direction. The direction of wingdings, notably. And that's useless true for the day. Anyway, this next visit to the Baron Temple is very simple. Since everybody is dead already, we can just waltz right on through. I was trying to see if it was possible to just jump over to the other side instead of having to do this, um, this little bit of platforming, but it's not. We uh, The king said that the temple is overrun with shades. You can see that's mm, not the case. I believe that you don't actually have to open the doors until he asks you to do this particular quest. Although I've always opened them the first time, so I'm not 100% certain about that. But it would make a lot more sense to have to fight your way through all the shades once he says it's been overrun. Fortunately, you get to the end here. And the king is not a liar. There are a whole bunch of shades here. And more importantly, a whole bunch of shades in the, um, the area where we fought Shariar. Shades are also giving me a lot of twisted rings. Sure is nice of them. It's a weapons synthesis component. Completely unnecessary, of course. Now they don't need them. But there it was. box is still in full functionality, in case any of the shades want to send a letter home to their parents. Damn it! He's a strong one. We better take our time. Wow! No wonder the mass people couldn't take this guy out! Save that for later, boy. We must stay calm and approach this slowly. Calm my ass! I agree with Kaine here. There's really no point to approaching this slowly. In fact, if you approach it slowly, you're just going to be overwhelmed by the bullet hell enemies over here. So, of course, the primary imperative is just to kill everything else in the area, then take on the big boss. He, again, has more stamina than his buddies, but not really enough to make it a 
major uh, issue. And that's that. Again, the game is kind enough to just teleport you right back to the king instead of making you not only run through the desert, but run all the way through facade to find him. And he gets you a sword! The final piece of the labyrinth set. And it, like its uh, cousins, sucks. Yeah. The labyrinth weapons are, I guess, uh, a bit gimmicky. They only require fluorite to upgrade, and their first three upgrades are ass. To be kind about it. You could see that even even the uh, two-handed sword only had a, a relatively small amount of power and only gained about uh, 20 points in damage between the upgrade and... Um, <laughs> oh my god, what was that? It only gained about 20 points in damage between this initial form and the upgrade. And they all do that up until the transition between level 3 and level 4, where they actually become decent usable weapons. Although, still not decent usable enough when you've got things yeah. like, uh... Well, the Iron Wheel or the Phoenix Spear. I did a final little check around Facade just to make sure that there were no further outstanding side quests, and um, they don't seem to be. I like how his wife mentions him getting tricked. I, I think their adultery was going both ways, just a guess. Anyway, we've, we've fixed um, all the problems we can fix for the people of Facade, so I guess it's time to head out and uh, speak to Popola, finally. See what she has next. See what's on the docket. See what that person's doing? Hey. Oh. Lovely. They... they couldn't be here! Stop with the bullshit and just kill them all! The hussy is correct. We must eliminate these beasts. But... but I... Emil, watch out! Right, yeah, so the girl from five years ago, um, did get killed? Her boyfriend dumped the body in sand spot well, a shade came up and took it over, and it's been hiding in facade trying to get intelligence on them for years. Wonderful. So once you've gone into this fight long enough and killed enough enemies, and spawned um, all three of these flying... Jeez, flying wizard shades? I forget what they're called. The Men of the Mask will come out to try and help you finish them off. Uh, they can't really help with these flying guys. At all. But they can keep the little ones off your back long enough to let you get these sons of bitches. Ugh. Like I said with the one out in the desert, they are uh, pretty hardy. They are quite agile. And they're flying, so you can't just try and get up close to hit them with a weapon. Well, you can try, it doesn't work. Of course, the men of the mask aren't really very helpful with just having the spears. But they are trying. So this can be a bit tricksy if you don't know how to deal with these guys, or if you haven't seen them before they uh, begin spawning now. And 
course. The set of side quests isn't complete without having a boss at the end of all of them. But again, he's a pushover. Far easier, in fact, than those flying shades. And from this point on, it's just mop up. That is a- that is a terrible idea, actually. No, don't. No. And that's a wrap for the facade side quest. That last one is, um kind of hidden. It won't show up on your side quest um, display until you've actually finished it, and there's no way short of actually finding that woman in the desert that you're actually going to know it exists. Uh, kind of neat. Anyway, um, we're off to once again continue ignoring Popola because there is something outstanding that I need to take care of.